Hi guys, Andrew Neil used to be a reasonable and competent journalist, but something happened some years ago where he seems to have decided to drop any form of integrity and either chase ratings or money. Neil invited on Mick Lynch, the head of the RMT, which is currently striking over pay and conditions for rail staff. However, Andrew seemed fixated on drivers who in some cases aren't striking, but in others aren't the main focus of the industrial action. Mick attempted to educate the journalist, but I don't think he got through to him. Uh, the rail system has a two billion pound funding gap. This is a strange time to drive away even more passengers. Well, the funding gap is being created by them cutting the funding. While they're cutting the funding, they're cutting jobs. And they, they put they 16 would... billion into the well, system. They, they put billions into the system every year, Andrew. Since privatisation, they've taken out more than 10 billion pounds in profit which could have been re reinvested in the services. So the funding cut is a deliberate attempt to cut back on rail workers' jobs and to cut back on railway workers' conditions, which is going to be mirrored all over the public service in this country. And I think workers are reaching a position where they've had enough of it. And I think not just in the public service, in the public sector, but also in the private sector. And we've also seen how p and ferries, for example, laid off 800 workers. Those are big hullabaloo in the House of Commons about that, uh, which came to nothing, because the company hired agency workers at lower pay and worse conditions. And, you know, while the Tories were complaining about P&O, they're doing nothing about the rail workers. And, you know, this, and Mick is right here, this is going to be emulated throughout the public sector and, of course, the private sector. They need a pay rise. The, they need job security. The average pay for a driver is £54,000. It could be, but we, we're not representing you, you drivers on their own here. No, but you do represent We're drivers. representing um, many people who are low paid, people who, whose salaries sure. are in the 20,000s, maybe but, early 30s. But, but you're not just going... And this is the go-to attack. This is the go-to attack. Talk about train drivers. Train drivers are probably one of the better paid within the, the system. But notice he's not talking about managers. <laughs> he's not talking about directors of the companies uh, who've made huge amounts of money. No, let's focus on the drivers because they are the biggest earners within the, within the system if we're excluding management. Um, but in many cases, the drivers are not on strike or if they are on strike, it's along with other workers, which Mick is going to describe on strike for them you're going for strike on, the, on strike for those uh, who earn 54,000 on average some are up to 80,000 that's for a four-day week they get six to eight weeks annual leave they get free or subsidized travel they retire at 62 they, can, annual, retire at 62. they can retire if they want at 62 for around a pension of 40,000 pounds a year it's not bad. Well, that's what, I'm not, that, I'm not against any of that. That's the power of organised trade me, unionism. But, that, but that, it's not a reason for going on strike. <laughs> but this is... The, what, what does Andrew Neil not understand? Those are very good conditions because the trade unions representing those drivers fought very hard. They managed to win those uh, benefits for those drivers. What the trade unions are doing now is trying to win benefits, win some sort of better conditions for drivers, not just drivers, but other people further down the pay grade. Well, we're not going on strike over that. We're going on strike because of job cuts, because everybody in this industry has not had a pay rise, including those low paid workers who earn between 20 and 30,000, which is the majority of people. People are, like yourself are obsessed by train drivers' wages, but you don't seem to be interested in cleaners' wages, caterers' wages, and people no. dispatching the trains. No, but, but if you were to say, look, we, we want to confine these negotiations to giving a proper boost to those on low pay in your union, the drivers are actually doing okay at the moment. Now, what he's trying to do here is he's trying to split the drivers, or split the drivers from the rest of the workers and say, look, the, the drivers don't need any extra benefits. But part of the problem as well is that many of the drivers will be laid off. So it's not just rail, other rail staff that would be laid off. It would be including drivers that will be laid off. And, you know, one thing is having a great uh, pay package. One, is, one thing is having great working conditions. 
But another thing is not having a job. What well, what's the point in having great working conditions if you don't actually work? Um, but this is an attempt to drive a wedge between different groups of workers. And Neil, Neil, uh, Andrew Neil does not care about the the staff um, because if a strike is taking place, it doesn't matter if it's just the work, just the drivers, or just the cleaners, or whatever. Any type of strike action needs to have an impact. And if it's if it's not having an impact, then it's not going to be used as a bargaining chip. It can't be used as a bargaining chip in the negotiations with the with the companies. We want those who, who are on low pay and have suffered. That would be a different matter, but you're well, not saying that. You've just identified the RMT yeah. standing policy, which is in all our pay claims that the lowest paid in the industry should get the highest paid. You're still going for pay rises for those who can earn well, up to 80,000. Well, we'll negotiate the package across the companies. It's a package across the company. It's not, OK, we're going to fight for people who are on lower wages because they may get something. But everyone is suffering the consequences of the cost of living crisis in regards to pay. But also, what's the point in getting a pay increase if you don't actually have a job? And this is what many of the companies want to do. They want to lay off a lot of workers and replace some of them with agency staff. This is what the strike is against. This is what the strike is about. It's not just pay. It's not just pay for drivers. It's about a number of different things. Principally, the cost of living crisis, yes, but also the fact that many people will be laid off and replaced with agency staff. That's unacceptable. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.